take you through the necessary setup and machining methods. Naturally, in order to machine those brake drums, you'll need a lathe. This is the Amco Model 4000 lathe, which can be used to machine drums and rotors from a very small passenger car up onto light trucks with a minimum of accessories. Over here, it's a bigger brother, the Model 4100. It comes with a longer boring bar, it has a little more travel here, and it has more standard equipment which allows you to do larger drums and rotors plus the lathe runs a little slower because it's designed to do heavy duty stuff. No matter which lathe you choose you're going to need some accessories to do these uh, electric trailer drums. One accessory is the 9619 hand wheel. This hand wheel will allow you to measure the depth of cut in thousandths of an inch and it replaces the standard hand wheel for the spindle feed on the lathe. And we'll take you through how to change this. This is the 3125 spacer. One, each lathe is equipped with one of these. However, in order to machine this small trailer drum, it will be necessary to have one extra. Another tool that will be necessary to machine both drums is the number 20761 toolbar. However, that bar has to be modified to do the drums. It has to be shaped or milled here, here, and rounded in this area. And your best bet is to contact the training center when ordering this bar and we'll see to it that it's shaped properly for it. One other accessory, the 4114 positive rake tool bit, which will be necessary for machining the friction surface of the brake drum. We recommend this tool mainly because it is positive rake and if that friction surface of the drum has hard spots, then the shape of the tool will pull that off. Now, if you order a 4118, you get three tools. The carbide portion of the tool bit is non-replaceable, but it may be resharpened. Okay, we'll take you through the procedure of changing the hand wheel. All we need is an Allen wrench. Loosen the Allen screw that locks the hand wheel to the lathe, pull that out, and then take the Allen screw completely out as we're going to use it with the new hand wheel. First thing we're going to put on is the pointer. Naturally, that's part of the hand wheel kit. That presses into place and is locked into position by the shape. There's a spring washer that slides on next. Then all we have to do is line this hole up with this hole. That will allow us to access the threaded hole in which the original Allen screw fits in. We'll slide the new hand wheel on, compress the washer to give it a friction fit. Tighten it up. Now we will be able to advance the spindle and you will be able to keep track of how many thousands you're taking off the face of the brake drum. Let's put a uh, tool bit and the tool bar in place now. Naturally, first of all, we're going to have to take the original boring bar out. We loosen the nut, slide the clamp back. The boring bar will lift out. We'll set that down. We'll set the new toolbar in place, slide the clamp over, and leave the nut slightly loose so that we can advance the tool as necessary. We'll put the tool bit in, and the very end of this tool is where the end or the bottom of this screw will rest. 
We'll slide that in, hold it firmly in place, and lock these screws down. Now depending on the type of drum that you may be working with, it may be necessary to vary this tool bit slightly sideways, advance it, or retract it. That's what the screws are for. So we'll lock that down and then go on to our next step. The next step being that the proper boring bar clamp position is at an angle about like so. Once again, the shape of the inside of the drum will determine how we rotate this. But position like this is adequate to start with. With the machining of any type of brake drum, one of the first steps in machining is to loosen this clamp nut and slide the boring bar back so when we put the drum on, it won't be interfering with the tool bit. The proper positioning for that small drum is we have to move this cross feed out six full turns. In order to do that, naturally we have to wind it in until it stops. Come out one, two, three, four, five, six. The proper position of the spindle and arbor would be one half turn out from stop. So we'll wind this down to its end and back one half turn. Okay. The small brake drum is equipped with tapered wheel bearing races on the inside and on the outside. So we're going to use the two smallest standard adapters with the lathe. On the inside we're going to use number 9922 the large end of it in the wheel bearing race here. And on the outer bearing, we'll be using the 9921 large end of the adapter in that wheel bearing race. Uh, let's take a look at this. This is the arbor nut. Uses a left hand thread due to the rotation of the spindle. This is a self-aligning spacer, and the rule is this is the last thing that goes on before the nut. However, in this case, when machining a small drum, we have to space the drum out, so we're going to use this as a spacer to begin with. Then our adapter, then the drum. And the next adapter, and then we'll put the nut on. The nut has a uh, like a deep unthreaded portion on one side, and the other side is threaded right to the end. So we'll put the nut on accordingly. And when machining any drum or rotor, the tightness of this nut is critical. It should be torqued at 25 foot-pounds. To achieve that without a torque wrench, you can use this wrench that's provided with the lathe, pull on it till it will rotate the drum and the arbor, and then just give it a small pull. And that's all that's necessary. To stress a point here on proper procedures, First of all, let's slide the boring bar in place, and we'll see that it interferes with a portion of the lathe, and the tool bed cannot get over across the entire friction surface. Proper setup is this. We purposely eliminated putting these two spacers in to point this out. Okay, now we'll slide this back out of the way. Take the nut, the adapter, and the drum off. Put the two 3125s on before the hardened and ground bearing adapter. Slide the drum back on. The nut, and of course, 
tighten it up the proper amount, which would be 25 foot-pounds. Or that can be achieved like so. Now, when we slide this in, we can see that it will cover the entire friction surface. I'm going to slightly tighten this, move the drum outward a little bit, and check the travel and make sure it goes all the way across. And it will never make it unless we turn the forward screw with one of its flats parallel with the edge of the drum. Like so. Okay, we make it to the end. We have plenty of travel on the cross feed. And we have to bring the cutter up all the way against are almost touching the hub surface of the drum. And it in fact will cut that entire surface. And it's not approximately 50 foot pounds. Just hold on to the bar like so without moving it and give the uh, wrench a good pull. That should achieve about 50 pounds of torque. Also, it will be necessary to silence the brake drum while machining it. That's to keep it from ringing or vibrating. Okay. Now, to machine this drum, we have two feeds here which are automatic. One is the fast, that would be putting the uh, shift knob in this position that would be doing for uh, a rough cut. This is for a finished cut so that when we're coming across the drum it will automatically feed this all the way across. Okay. Now for getting the depth of cut we're going to be using this hand wheel and we will be advancing the drum into the tool bed. And once we make initial contact we will loosen this lock knob, which will allow us to rotate this ring, which is graduated in thousandths of an inch, and also in millimeters, if you choose to use millimeters. Once the initial contact is made, we will set this up at zero, lock the dial, and then advance the depth of cut that would be necessary to machine the drum. Generally, that would be somewhere between two and fifteen thousandths would probably be enough. Also, in general, you probably won't need a roughing cut or a fast cut. We would just then put automatically put it in uh, slow feed or finish. Okay. All right. So here we go. We'll turn the lathe on. We will advance the drum to the cutter. Until it just touches, like so. We'll loosen our little black knob here. Rotate our graduated dial up to zero. Move the boring bar all the way to the end so it takes care of the entire surface of the brake drum. Okay. Then we will advance the necessary uh, depth, which in this case I feel as though five thousandths would do it. So that would be like two and a half marks here. Two thousandths, four thousandths, and halfway in between would be five. Okay. Now, to keep the spindle from moving accidentally, we will tighten this lock knob. Also, I'm going to slide this little collar up and tighten that thumb screw so that no one accidentally engages this gearbox. Now we will put this into the feed position and once again we're going to do it on a slow cut or a finished cut. Get under the friction surface of the drum here and start making a cut here. As you can hear there's a lot of vibrating and squealing going on right now. Now, we don't want to machine a drum like that because that is a vibration of the tool bed. 
The reason the tool is vibrating in this case is because it's extended almost to its limit. In order to stop that, we're going to do something that looks a little bizarre, but it works very well. We're just going to clamp on a pair of vice grips here. We add mass to reduce vibration, turn the lathe back on, and you can see we'll get a nice smooth cut now. As you can see, it may be necessary with a small round to vary the position of our extra weight that we put on to reduce vibration. Okay, we're almost at the end. So what we're going to do is take the lathe out of gear and uh, let me shut this off. Now, the automatic stop for this when we're machining rotors, which there is not a ledge in the way, is that it comes out and it stops feeding. Here, with the ledge in the way, we're going to have to feed the last little bit by hand using the hand wheel over here. So I'll start the lathe back up. And by hand, I'll take it the rest of the way. Very, very carefully. take this boring bar out, we'll put the standard boring bar in now and machine this side. Okay, we've just machining, finished machining the face of the drum in a normal manner with the standard boring bar. Now on these small drums, if it's absolutely necessary to get in at the very edge here and the very edge here for the uh, other friction surface, you could do that using the standard boring bar, loosen it up, take the tool bit out, and actually you can turn the boring bar upside down and put the tool bit back in there, like so. And Position it in. As you can see, you could you can work it one way or the other to get right at the edge surface in there. Now the tool that works best for that would be like a number 4725 positive rake bit. It's got a very sharp point, so you can get that tool right up against the edge there and work it on in as necessary to finish up. If necessary. I don't believe it is on this drum. Now we're going to machine a larger drum, which should be quite a bit easier. Now this drum is missing the bearings and or bearing races. Therefore, we're going to use the standard centering cone and mount right on the very edge, which is machined, so it's a good mounting. The only thing we have to watch out for is for nicks and burrs and bumps. If there's any on there, they will have to be filed off. So we chose that one, which is a number 3107, standard with the lathe, slide the drum on. The other we chose is a 3903, which is standard with the lathe. We're going to have to use a spacer, so we'll use a regular bearing race adapter, in, in this case, to take up the extra space, our self-aligning spacer and a nut. Once again, we're looking for about 50 foot-pounds, I mean 25 foot-pounds of torque here. Okay, we'll go ahead and put this boring bar in and set it up. Okay, now we have the large drum mounted and silenced. 
<clears throat> and about the only difference between the large drum and the small drum is the large drum is easier to do. We can shorten the tool bit so that there's less vibration problems. And the idea of the setup here is that we would have the cross feed out about five turns and you slide the boring bar in and trying to keep this portion of the boring bar fairly parallel with this protective boot right here. I will check and make sure that we have enough inside and outside travel to make it all the way across. So the first thing I will do is just I will advance the drum this way till it just touches the cutter. Then I'll rotate it in and you can see it's scribing a line here so that we can trace that. Okay, it makes it all the way across so we can start at the inside and let's make sure that we have enough cross speed travel. You can see it's coming out and yes it just makes it to the edge and bumps right here. So what we can do now is just loosen the boring bar clamp and just move this in just a hair and okay it makes it to the edge we'll just follow that line all the way across make sure okay it makes it across the friction surface so now what we'll do is start the lathe we'll find the high point which is the unused friction surface here or the part not worn away as much okay that's top so we'll set the little uh, graduated hand scale at zero like we did on the small one we'll walk this in all the way take a depth of cut as necessary like we spoke about before lock up our spindle so it won't travel on us and we will put this one in a finished cut also as we can see this surface of the drum is worn more than this surface we have the lathe and uh, automatic slow finish but what we can do to save a little time is reach over and shift it into high let it get across the surface then we'll go back and take either another roughing or fast cut or smooth cut as necessary and remember before I said set up on the high portion that way you only take as much off as you dialed in 